the first thing we'll discuss is the ingredients. And the most important ingredient for a banana bread is, of course, the bananas. The bananas that I'm using today in my banana bread are Cavendish bananas. Now, the secret to a really, really good banana bread is to use very overripe bananas. Now, if you don't have any overripe bananas in your home at the moment, what you can do is take your bananas at 150 degrees on conventional heat, just let them uh, roast for around 25 to 30 minutes. And what will happen is your banana will go this color right here, and it will go very squishy and very, very soft, and it will represent an overripe banana. The uh, sweetness will concentrate, and it will improve your banana bread. So don't make a banana bread with bananas like this, overripe bananas, or 150 degrees for about 25 to 30 minutes, and there is your overripe banana. Now, what we've got is 400 grams of bananas, and what we need to do is mash them with a fork. So with the bananas that I've placed in the oven, what happens is they're very easy to peel. There we are, and we take our roasted banana into a bowl and we just give it a good match. Give it a good match. I don't want a few chunky bits in the banana bread. So there we go. There is 400 grams of a mashed ripe banana. I would say allow yourself six bananas. You're going to need four to five um, to get up to the 400 gram weight of uh, mashed banana. And then we're going to take another banana, this one right here, and we're going to slice it and we're going to place it on top when we bake the banana bread. Let's go through the other ingredients that you're going to require. I have 130 grams of unsalted butter. I have 200 grams of dark muscovado sugar. I have one teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. You can use vanilla extract or you can split and scrape a whole vanilla bean. I have three eggs. Now I'm using large eggs today. I have 240 grams of plain flour. One teaspoon each of baking powder and bicarbonate of soda. They're the rising agents. I have two tablespoons of full cream milk. I have 50 grams of finely chopped glace ginger. And I've got a bit of a secret weapon in my arsenal, which is one tablespoon of tahini. Now, as a chef, very fortunate over the years to have worked with some very, very talented cooks. And we do pick up little hints and tips along the way. And the first time I was taught to make banana bread, uh, the chef who taught me, she put in a tablespoon of tahini and it's stuck with me ever since. I really like the savouriness and that sort of nutty seediness that it brings. You'll see I don't use walnuts in my banana bread, but the tahini, yeah, give it a go. It's quite good. I have a very good pinch of sea salt. And also what I have here is one teaspoon of eight spice powder. Now this is a very, very versatile little spice. I'm using it today in the banana bread. And also I should say, if you're chasing a gluten-free banana bread, there is a gluten-free banana bread on the Mueller Experience website. And uh, this is where I got the recipe for the eight spice powder. It is also going to be included in my recipe, but this eight spice powder is amazing. You can use it for sweet, you can use it for savory. The recipe does make quite a bit, but it's got juniper in it, it's got cinnamon, it's got white peppercorns, it's got saffron, it's got cloves, it's got cardamom. And speaking of cloves, cloves actually make bananas and recipes that include bananas actually it intensifies the flavor. So the eight spice powder that has the clove in it, very good addition to the banana bread. And I've got one good teaspoon there. Now the most important piece of equipment that you're going to need to bake this banana bread, and it's gonna make the job a lot easier, is a stand mixer. I will be baking the banana bread in this silicon loaf tin. Well, it's not really a tin, um, silicon loaf mold. If you can find a silicon loaf mold like this, it's going to make taking the banana bread out so much easier. Now, this is a 24 centimeter by 10 centimeter. I found this recipe fits extremely snugly in this little 24 by 10 centimeter silicon loaf mold. And what I've done here is I've just lightly brushed it with some softened butter. You're going to need a sieve because what we're going to do is we're going to sieve the flour, the baking powder, and also the bicarbonate of soda. So that's very important. 
This is very important as well. This is a spatula. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to scrape down the sides of our bowl when we start creaming the butter and the sugar and when we incorporate the egg. And then finally, when we mix in the dry ingredients, which is going to be the flour, the spices, and the rising agents, we're going to fold. And it's very important we need this spatula um, straight edge, straight sides, so we can scrape around and get all the ingredients off the bowl. Now, when we are ready to bake this banana bread, we're gonna bake it in an oven. And I'm going to use a conventional heat. I'm gonna use a temperature of 180 degrees C. Now we choose conventional heat because that's a heat that does not have the fan. It's not fan force heat. It's a static heat that uses the top and the bottom elements. And when you're baking a, a, a cake or um, a, a recipe similar to this that's quite dense, conventional heat is going to cook it a little bit sort of slower and it's not going to achieve as much browning on the outside. Okay, so let's now create the banana bread. I'm just gonna move over here to my mixer and I'll show you how easy it is to make. Okay, let's begin to make this banana bread. Now I'm using a stand mixer and I have the paddle attachment. All right, it's important we use the paddle attachment uh, for this cake. And we're going to start by adding in the butter and the sugar and also the vanilla bean paste or extract, whatever you choose to use. And what we're going to do is we're going to mix it, we're going to cream it. So we're going to incorporate a little bit of air and we're going to ensure that the butter, the sugar and the vanilla is completely mixed, nice and evenly. Now it is very important, I must say, that all the ingredients that we use to create this banana bread must be at room temperature. Most importantly, the butter and also the eggs. When the eggs go into the butter, we need to make sure they're the same temperature so they emulsify much easier. Now, after about three minutes, what's very important to do is turn off the uh, stand mixer. And we're just gonna scrape down the sides because what will happen is a lot of the butter and the sugar will creep up the sides and it won't be mixed in evenly. So it is very important, very important step. We do always do this with all our uh, creamed mixes and cream cakes. Rightio, that's been five minutes and um, everything's all mixed in quite well. Now the next stage, what we do is we're going to add the eggs one at a time and we're going to emulsify the eggs into the cream, butter, sugar and vanilla. But before I do that, I'm going to scrape down the sides once more. Also scrape the paddle. You'll see that there will be a little bit of um, butter and sugar that's not fully emulsified and mixed in on the paddle. So again, we want to get it fully mixed. There we go. So scrape down one more time. Just bring it together again. There we are, and now we're ready to add the first egg. As I said, add the eggs one at a time. Room temperature eggs. Turn it off. Pop the egg in. No need to break it up, it's quite okay. And we're going to mix. And we don't add the second egg, or the third, until the, uh, the first and the second has been fully emulsified. At first it's going to look like it's split, but just to increase the speed a little bit. Coming together now, and I'll turn that off, it might be a bit easier to hear. And also what I'm doing after I add each egg, and it is emulsified into the butter mixture, I am scraping the sides down again, very important. All right, egg one is successfully emulsified. Scrapey, scrapey, we're gonna scrape down the sides again, all around the edges. Go. Slight mix. Egg number two. Scraping down the sides again after the second egg has been added. Scrape down the paddle. Egg 
number three. In you go. And bring it together. Okay, three eggs are now incorporated and emulsified into the butter, the sugar, and the vanilla. Turn it off. Now, we're going to take our 400 grams of our mashed banana, pop that in. I'm going to add the glacé ginger. The secret weapon, which is the tahini. There it goes. And also the two tablespoons of full green milk. There we go. So these are all our work ingredients we are mixing together. And I'm going to give it a good mix, maybe about a minute. Okay, that's all mixed in. We're going to turn that off. We're not going to use the stand mixer anymore. We're going to fold through the dry ingredients with our spatula. Now it's important when we add the dry ingredients, we keep the mixing to a minimum. All right, we don't want to agitate the gluten and create that, uh, those gluten strands too much. We want to keep it nice and soft. All right, so I've just taken the bowl away from the stand mixer. As I said, we're just going to use um, our hands now to fold through the dry ingredients. So we get our sieve and we're going to sieve over the flour. The bicarbonate of soda and the baking powder. And now we just sieve over. You'll need to push through just a few lumps, probably, of the bicarb. There we go. Now we add the salt, salt flakes, a very important uh, eight spice powder. And we're going to stir very gently and we're just going to fold it until it comes together. We'll go from the bottom to the top, scraping the sides. That's it. One more look at the bottom. Oop, a little bit of a dough boy there. It was my first chef used to call um, um, unmixed in flour. Get those dough boys out, James. Strange how things stick with you. So all the dough boys are now gone. So we are mixed. Still being gentle, popping it in. Always important, scraping down all the sides of the bowl. That's what these um, plastic spatulas are so valuable for. And then what I'll do is just with a spoon, just push it down gently just to the edges. It comes really nice and high in the 24 by 10 loaf tin here. Just like so. And then the last thing we'll do, um, we're just going to get another banana. You don't have to um, uh, do this stage if you don't want it, but it looks really neat. Uh, we're just going to place a peeled sliced banana, slice it from top to bottom. And we're just going to place it on the top of the banana bread, pushing down ever so slightly. And then we've got a little bit extra of our dark muscovado sugar. And we're just going to sprinkle that over the top of the bananas. They'll brulee nicely. There we go. And that banana bread is ready for the oven. Now the banana bread, I'm going to bake in a preheated 180 degrees C oven. And the function I'm using is conventional heat. Now this recipe, the many times that I've cooked it at that given temperature on, very important, on shelf level two, it takes me an hour. Now it might take you 45 to 50 minutes, it might take you an hour and 10 or an hour and 20, just depending on the tin that you are using. So probably monitor it after around 50 minutes if it's the first time you've cooked it, uh, and just see if it needs a little bit longer. And we know it's cooked by when we put a skewer into the middle of the uh, banana bread, take it out and the skewer will come out clean.
There we are, banana bread is finished baking. Now what I'm going to do now is just let it cool in the silicon mold for 15 minutes and then I'm going to take it out and um, let it cool for a further probably 30 minutes to 60 minutes before I slice it. Okay, the banana bread's been cooling for 15 minutes. Now I'm just going to carefully uh, remove it from the, the silicon mold and just let it cool for a further, as I said, 30 to 60 minutes on the cooling rack. Comes out ever so easy with the silicon, it's amazing. And the butter we brushed around the outside has just added to the flavour. So yeah, just carefully just sit in there, don't play around with it too much. It can break pretty easily when it's still warm. If you want to hook into it now, just be careful. It might be a little bit difficult to slice. It's going to be hard not to because it smells amazing. Um, please give it about 30 minutes before you slice it, uh, just to be safe. Even 60 minutes to be even safer. So I'm going to leave that there to cool before slicing it. I hope you've enjoyed the recipe. If you do want to find the recipe, please swipe up and visit the Miller Experience websites. It's been my pleasure. There's a really cracking banana bread. Happy cooking. I'll see you next time.